What's up everybody, FSC Trucking? Well, I figure since I have it all apart, I may as well do an overhead on this thing and show you guys how to do an overhead on these 3406B 7FB variants at least. Well, let's go ahead and get the video started. We have it torn down. All we gotta do is pull the valve covers. I mean, I already have the intake out. Let's go. Now, some of you may know, some of you may not know that when I first rebuilt Orwell's engine, the very first thing I ordered was I ordered the 3406B uh, diesel engine manual, service manual on everything, how to rebuild and work on these engines. I also have the one for the 3406A, the original 3406, but that's for another time. So now we need to do is figure out exactly what we're going to do. Troubleshooting uh, specification, system operation testing and adjusting. That sounds like us. Troubleshooting guide, general instructions, disassembly and assembly, and air compressors. We should be in the testing and adjusting section three. Now this book is revised June of 06. So far as I know, it is a very recent reprint of the original. There you go, there's the idea of how your after cooler works. That's what it looks like, the plumbing. That's just two different tops for it, apparently. Cylinder block, kind of gives you a rough idea of everything. Cylinder liner projection, how to check. Cylinder liners, pistons and rings. It's down to the nitty gritty of it all. I love this book, it's a great book. Oh, Jake breaks that's on section too, there you go. Valve covers, 124. Valve rocker arms, lifters, and bridges, and valves. 1-24 through 1-26, basically. Okay, so. There you go. 25 valves. Rocker arm, lifters, and bridges. And how they work. Testing and adjusting. Section three, air inlet and air exhaust, valve clearance setting, Jake brake adjustment, air to air after cool system bridge adjustment. That's 353, compression, pressure cylinder head, exhaust temperature, Jake brake adjustments 55. All right, so let's go to 53. 3-53, bridge adjustment. When the head is disassembled, keep the bridges with the respective cylinders. Adjust, adjustment of the bridge will be necessary after the valves are ground, other reconditioning, a new cylinder head is done. Obviously, we're not doing any of that. We're just adjusting what's there. The bridge valves are, the bridge should be checked and or adjusted each time the valves are adjusted. The bridge should be checked and or adjusted each time the valves are adjusted. To check for wear, use a dial indicator to measure the amount of wear on the bridge seat. Make sure the correct point of the dial indicator is small enough to diameter to get accurate measurement. Use the bridge again if the wear is 0.13 or five thousandths of an inch or less. The wear seat is worn more than the allowable limit. The worn surface seat can be ground flat. The maximum amount of material can be removed is 15 thousandths. If the seat cannot be made flat, replace the bridge. Reconditioning the wear seat can only be done once. Put engine oil on the bridge dowel in the cylinder head and in the bore of the bridge. Install the bridge with the adjustment screw toward the exhaust manifold. Loosen the lock nut for the adjustment screw and loosen the adjustment screw several turns. Put a force on the bridge with a finger to keep the bridge in contact with the valve stem opposite the adjustment screw. Turn the adjustment screw clockwise until it just makes contact with the valve stem. Then turn the adjustment screw 30 degrees more in a clockwise direction to make the bridge straight on the dowel and to make compensation for the clearance in the threads of the adjustment screw. Hold the adjustment screw in this position and tighten the lock nut to 30 plus 4 newton meters or 22 plus 3 foot pounds. Plus or minus 3 foot pounds. Put engine on a point where the rocker arm makes contact with the bridge. Then it goes to valve clearance setting. So this is how you adjust that. Then the, adjust, the Jake brakes, again, is how to adjust here. What the last setting should be. We'll get into that as we go. But see, so you see, we have the book. 
on how to get it done. I will take what's left of the old gasket off. This is where it broke. This is where my boost leak was right in here. You see the marks on the valve cover from it blowing outward that way. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this blanket in the intake so I don't accidentally drop anything. And if I do, it'll stop it from going down into a port and into a cylinder. God forbid a valve happens to be open. Take our wires and now start taking our valve covers off. Now these valve covers, this also this engine also has a jake brake, so there's three pieces. There's a cover the jake spacer and then the original spacer that would be if the engine had no jakes There's our rearmost valve cover. The way this engine, particular engine mounts in this particular truck is a radiator support bracket that goes right here that this water hose goes from the top radiator through but also keeps the radiator from wobbling back and forth. It is so close to the valve cover it has to be removed in order to get the valve cover out. Now these things up top are the actual Jake brakes, but we have to take this spacer. You're going to see when this piece comes off, it's only so thick. That adds a spacer. The rocker arms would sit on this base directly. So this thing has to adapt. The way Jake brakes work, that's a whole video to be made, but not by me. Take the wire off, it goes to them. The wire off on the inside, it goes to them. And then just tuck that inside for the time being. All right, I spray these studs down. You'll see why in a minute. Well, that one's coming loose. Whole studs turning. This one is working. nice that one's going nice admittingly I haven't done this in a while and it's been too long since I have so a little neglectful on it but the hardware is coming off okay so depending on time wise I might replace the hardware I might not probably not I'll just clean them up, most likely. But oh, that one's spinning the whole thing. Spinning the whole thing's okay, it'll come apart. Yep. 
All right, all three are out except the back two. The back two are tucked under here. I don't know if I can get a ratchet wrench in there. take the jake brake wire off and while i'm at it i may as well take the other side out Grab my wrench See those studs should have came out with the nuts, but we'll take this apart once we get it out of the truck itself. Okay. studs that went down in the bottom here one two and this one here also is what torques this bottom plate down that's the jake brake adapter plate there we are here's your valves and your jake brakes All right, now the jakes come off with this bolt, sorry, nut and nut, inch and an eighth. Washer. Oh yeah, and there, I think five eighths or nine sixteenths bolts right there too keep that rock in action these are actually head bolts these here but we didn't loosen the head bolt itself it's a long stud it is 9 16 one is 9 16 one is 5 8 apparently so there must be a difference Bear in mind, I am the one to put this engine together. I don't remember every detail of it. Nine sixteenths one goes to the back of the engine. is considerably short. Five eighths is to the front. It's much longer. Of course, there's a washer. There's your Jake brake housing. All 
real quick. See this here? That's your oil feed tube that feeds the hydraulic pressure to your Jake brakes. This washer spacer, do not lose it. This is a head bolt here and is a special deep well socket to snap on make specifically for this length of head bolt. A standard deep well is not deep enough. You have to have that snap on tool, which I do have. Here's your pressure lines from your injector pump into your nozzles. These stands, well this is a spacer stand for your jakes. This is bolted direct with the head bolts here and here. This is a spacer plate that goes in with the head bolt, just a little square block is all you see. That's it. I mean, bear in mind, these engines were designed for jake brakes to be used or not to be used. They didn't come factory with jakes. That's the 5 eighths. Now bear in mind, everybody, Caterpillar built engines, but then they did not build the jake brake. The jake brake is actually just a brand of an engine brake. Jacob's engine brake. We just nicknamed it Jake Brake. But it's the Jacob's Engine Brake Company that made these. Long in the front with the washer. This is where you must be careful not to drop crap in the engine or you'll be fishing it out of your oil pan. These, you really don't gotta kill them. I remember the torque is really not much. Okay, Jake pack should be loose, which it is. Slide right off. Excellent. Alrighty boys and girls, so now that I have the whole thing apart, I have to find top dead center of either the compression stroke or between exhaust and intake stroke to know which valves to do next. So what you do is you bar over the engine. I'm getting ready to show you where you pin the flywheel because what you're looking for is valve overlap, which I'm almost there. So I'll show you how to find it and also how to pin the engine when you do. Now on the back of the engine back here, here's your bell housing. There's a plug right here, and that plug, you come out, and that's where you stick a timing pin in. That way, once you put the pin in, or in this case, a screwdriver, it'll lock it in the top dead center, which will be the compression stroke of number six, and that's where you adjust the valves, because that one, number one, will be in the middle of valve overlap. There you go. It's just a pipe plug, basically. A screwed up threaded pipe plug, to be honest. Oh, not that bad. You hear the flywheel pushing on it. And you stab into the screwdriver, you go in. That's the flywheel you're hitting. You can't feel the hole either way. These are the exhaust valves being pushed down. This is the aforementioned bridge. This is the intake. See, it's a little loose. So as this starts coming up, at the end of exhaust stroke, it will start to overlap where this one is slightly open and this is slightly open. So as soon as this starts opening, I stop and then check my pin on the flywheel. Now I'll bar the engine over to show you. Now from my position, I don't know if you can see my face, I could just see the uh, intake valve, which is the most farther valve.
See the intake just starting to go down, the exhaust should be coming up. Right there ought to be overlap. There it is, right there. That's all the way in, that's pinned. Alrighty, so now we found top dead center of number six in compression stroke. So we could just do it right there, but for the sake of just making sure we bar it over one more time to get all the slack out of the valve train, we're gonna run it over another 360. And that'll set the number one at compression stroke where both valves are closed and there's slack on both intake and exhaust rocker arms. Excellent, now it's pinned at top dead center at number one compression stroke. So now, let's look. Put number one piston at top dead center on compression stroke. Mark reference to find top center compression piston for number one piston. Make an adjustment to the valve clearance on the intake valves for number one, number two, number four. Make an adjustment valve clearance on the exhaust valves for number one, three, and five. Now first we have to do the bridges before we do the valve clearances, but now with it all loose on the proper valves, we can also just take the valve lash completely out, adjust the bridges, and then adjust the valves on top of them and work as we go. Okay, this is how it sits in the truck right there. That's how it sits in the truck right there. We're not gonna use Painters, uh, you know, uh, marking paint. So what we're going to do is each one we do, we're going to do it. Number one, two, three, four, five, six. Bridge, 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 and so on. Intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust, and so on. As we do each one, we will mark it off. In the end, we should have four X's on top of each cylinder. That's not accounting Jake brakes. Alrighty, boys and girls, here we are. First things first, you notice... There's no pressure on these. So now we got to break these loose. These are the adjustments that you tighten later with torque. These nuts are just the lock nuts. They spin loose. And this is the adjustment itself right here. So now, see how much more play there is. Now your bridges are right here because there's two valves and the bridge is to push down together. Now Adept Ape did a video on, I forget what kind of engine it is, but if you ever replace these bridges, you'd better make damn sure 
you have the proper bridge because you can contact the valve seat and not the valves itself. We're gonna pull this adjustment way out. Same here. So the bridge is, see? Probably should have did it with my other hand. It's hard to show you because of the lack of light. See? Valve stem, valve stem. Perfect. Alright, that's as high as that'll go. Unless we all right, I don't want I don't really want to take the push rod out. So you put your finger here on the opposite side of the adjustment screw and you turn it just until you feel it contact. Right there. Then give it another approximate 30 degrees. So that would be 45, that would be 90. Right there. And hold that down and then torque that down to 30 Newton meters or X amount of foot pounds, I forget the number. I have an inch pound and a Newton meter wrench already set up for this. Push down. Right there's where it touches. 30 degrees more. Bring your lock down. Down. this okay bridge bridge done remember you could do intake number one exhaust number one next intake you could do is number two and number four now another thing to note here valve clearance setting Valve clearance check engine stopped. That's checking. Here's setting. Valve clearance set engine stopped. Because you can adjust it with the engine running, but so exhaust is 30 thousandths, intake is 15 thousandths. Of course, I have a set of feeler gauges right here. So let's go ahead and set them. And first, we're going to do the intake. It's the most forward, and that's 15 thousandths. So this one's the intake. Easy way to know. See the exhaust? Easy way to tell. See the exhaust valve right here? Right there. See the exhaust port right here to the manifold? That's closest there. Intake comes from that side. Exhaust, see? Easy way to know. All right, here. So what we're gonna do is tighten this screw. Pushing that, ro that rocker arm down against the 15 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge 
right in here. See you loosen it, see it glides? A little tight, too tight, can't move it. I like that right there. Leave it in there. Thread the lock nut down. I like that there. There we go. Like that. So the intake is done. Now we gotta tighten the exhaust down. I have a separate one. A separate feeler gauge, 30 thousandths. See that mistake I almost made right there, boys and girls? Look at my push rod. I knew something looked off. Take it.
and take an exhauster done. Feel around to verify that push rod in the back side. All right, we're good. Excellent. Okay, number one is finished with the exception of the Jake brakes. Now we continue on the rest. Okay, next we're gonna do the intake on number two, and then we could do number four, number two, number three, number four over here. So now we're gonna do this intake. See, this exhaust valve is pushed down. Obviously, you can't adjust that. That one's ready to go. Break loose the adjustment. Break loose the adjustment. Watch, you get a torque off the crow's foot against the arm, see? So you got to turn the crow's foot around. See, like so. Details. Devil's in the details. I'll let you know if you screw it up, believe me. Okay. Number two intake is done. See, to me that's loose. I like that. It's tight, but not too tight. So again, we'll do the intake. One, two, three. See, so intakes all the way down, see? Four. Number four intake, and then five and six. So this is the next one. Excellent. All right, you guys watch me do the bridge on two, the intake on two, and on four, the bridge, intake on four. Now what's left? Intake valves for one, two, and four, and exhaust valves for one, three, and five. Contact plus 30 ish. I hear money getting spent. Heater came on. Now, some of you may know when the Jake's engage. They push on these nuts up here, up high, up high, I think. That's good. Eh, just a little tighter. Alrighty boys and girls, so I'll mark down, one exhaust is done, we did that already, then three exhaust and bridge is done, and five exhaust and bridge is done. So now we have to rotate the engine over 360 degrees in the direction of rotation. Now if you ever watch my buddy James Purdy's channel, you find out he made a mistake years ago. If you're ever timing a fuel pump, you have to go around and do it in the proper direction. If you don't and leave tension on that pump, 
you'll leave slack in the gear train. So again, if you go past it, if you're gonna back up to it, you gotta go a lot past it. Then come back to it, making sure that the slack in that gear train is taken out. So let's go ahead and spin it around. First, we pull the pin, then we'll get at it. Here's your pin. Well, screwdriver in this case. The pin, slide it out, set it on the APU. Alrighty, now we're under the engine. What I did is I marked an arrow with a paint pen facing that way. See my mark? I, there's two marks on it. One seeable from the side and one seeable from the bottom. Basically, I kind of line this line up to the center and that line right there. I've already got the engine or breaker bar on the engine, so I just spin it easy. Let the compression, you know, it's going to build compression as you turn it. Let it bleed out. Spill a little more. Let it bleed out. Takes a lot more than you think to spin these things over. Caterpillar has a nice little tool for this crap. I never made one. Here's our mark. Let me go check our pin. That pins. All right, there we go. Bridge, exhaust, that's all of them. All right, well, up next is the Jake brakes. And then that's it. We're gonna do that tomorrow, so we'll be back tomorrow. What's up, everybody? We're back, it's the next day. We're getting ready to go ahead and install the Jake brakes. So, we got done with the valves yesterday. Now we're putting the Jake brakes on today. I'll show you what we got going on here. It's really simple. So I put the Jake brakes down here, the Jacob packs, as you say, whatever you want to call them. This one is the front and that one's the back. I just put them in that catch can, that way it wouldn't drip too much oil on the shop floor. Although, I missed a little bit, but that's okay. So now we're going to go ahead and install them back on the engine. Alrighty, boys and girls, we're basically ready to go ahead and put the Jake brakes on the front of the engine. Now it's broken half, first three cylinders, second three cylinders back that way. Now you have to be careful that don't damage this O-ring right here. It's so O-ring right there on this oil spout. It just keeps the oil pressure in the end. This oil feed right here is what supplies the Jake brakes. It's what works them because the uh, they work off hydraulic pressure, which they use the oil from the engine to do so. So we're going to take a little bit of oil dab in that plug right there and just soak that O-ring there real quick. Now i got to go get the pack itself and set it down on the engine. I may as well pre-place this right here that support goes in there like so there's a bolt that goes through it and then the other one it's a solid mount like that now the way the jake works is kind of ingenious these plungers over here on the bottom side when the jake's energized like this one here pushes oil out to this one here and it pushes down a fork which holds that exhaust valve open that one also energizes here see this plunger also energizes down this direction and it comes up to oh here him and i'm not sure which one it looks like that one energizes these two and he energizes here but then he's also here too that's those different studs if you remember from the valve adjustment the difference between the exhaust adjustment and the uh, intake adjustment that's what that that's how that basically works so but it uses the hydraulic oil the engine oil to make that function the way that, that Jacobs wants it to happen so 
We'll take our long bolt. Obviously we completely missed the mark on that. There we go. Leave him loose. Next one goes in the back. Washer. Washer. Nut. That's why you put the rag in there. And nut. Right, we do the same like we did with the one in the front. There's your dowel with your O-ring. Stick my finger in the oil. We're gonna oil that down real good. Excellent. Those fork pieces look like they're sticking up. That's what goes down. Here here and here come down when you energize it, which hit those funny looking timing, uh, timing adjust, uh, these funny looking valve lash adjustments. That's how that works. I figure I'd show it to you quick. Spacer. <laughs> Again, fifty pounds. Readjust the torque wrench to 100 foot pounds. Jake's are installed. Alrighty, Jake brakes are installed, but not adjusted. Now, the book does call to start the adjustment process. You have to start at number one, top dead center compression stroke. However, if you remember when we did the valves, we stopped at number six, top dead compression. We stopped at number six, top dead center compression stroke. So we're going to go to the end of the last three cylinders per the book, then rotate the engine 360, and then we're going to do the first step because why rotate it 360 twice? Right. All right, here you go, Jake brake adjustment like we discussed. So the way it wants you to do it is place... Piss, place number one piss in the top dead center compression stroke. Make reference to find. Make, so we, we did this already. Explains how to loosen a lock nut and change. I need two separate feeler gauges. After adjustment, lock the lock nut. Be sure to check the lash with two feeler gauges at the same time, one under each slave piston. Remove the timing bolt. Rotate the flywheel 360. This will put number six piston in the top dead center, which is where we're at right now. Then you can make an adjustment on the sleeve, piston lash for cylinders two, four, and six. Remember, Jake brakes only function your exhaust valve, so there's no intake adjustment at all. In fact, when you take a brand new engine and put a Jacobs brake on it, you are replacing, I forgot, if you notice there's a difference between the two bridges, well, there's no need for the difference in the bridges. However, you do need a different, wider, fatter bridge, so those forks that come down from the Jake brakes, 
those forks that come down from the jake brakes will press on the on the bridge pushing on both valves directly remember it's two exhaust valves two intake valves per cylinder that's what that bridge does opens them both at the same time so that's basically how it works so your original you that's how it works so your original bridges would have been chucked or not even installed and your jacobs one installed i'm not sure how caterpillar would have done it whether they would have shipped it to peterbilt without the jakes or ordered it with the jakes i'm not sure how it would have been done in those days either way point either way my point is it's only on exhaust valves so we're done with the intakes completely so the only adjustments left is on the jakes themselves not the valves all righty now per the cat book you have to know which model jakes you have also I didn't realize this, but the diagram of how they work is right on top of the Jake brakes themselves. We have model number C46. We have number C46B. And with that, you can see the diagram on how they work and what does what, how it crosses over. The top part of your screen is where it comes from the plunger from your uh, valve lash adjustment. The bottom part is the actual fork that pushes down on the exhaust bridge. As you can see, here's your forks that go down, pushing on your exhaust bridge. That's why, that's why these bridges are fatter than these. See, there's no jake. That's the intake. And there's your exhaust. That's how that works. So now what we're looking for, I already saw in the book, what we're looking for is the distance between this bridge. So now we're looking for, I already looked ahead in the book, is the distance between this bridge and this fork. I'm trying to set it at 70 thousandths. I'll move our power wire out the way for a second. Set it there. Break the adjustment loose. Again, it's a 9 16 Open up the adjustment some. Now, I do not have feeler gauges that are 70 thousandths each. But I do have three of them on each side that adds up to 70 thousandths. It would be nicer if I did, but I don't. So that's how it is. Close the adjustment down. I do know from Caterpillar mechanics talking to me, it's always good to put a little extra pressure on them. Get any oil out of that system. And then, release it a little to set your adjustment the way it's supposed to be. Right there. Bring your lock nut down. Torque. I forget what the number is. I have to remember. I think it's 22 newton. Yeah, 22 newton meters. The reason why I use newton meters, I have a torque wrench that's an inch pounds. I don't have a torque wrench that goes down to 16 foot pounds. But Caterpillar gives you both newton meters and foot pounds. But this is inch pounds, so we'll run with newton meters. That way you don't have to worry about doing conversions. Perfect. That's cylinder two. We're done with cylinder two. All right, finally, number six.
Alrighty, boys and girls. Now all we got to do is rotate the engine over 180 and then redo the process. That's pretty much it because uh, you already saw me do that. There's no sense in me go ahead and showing you the rest. But yeah, two, four, and six are done. So we rotate the engine 180 degrees out. At least one, three, and five remaining. There you go. That's it, boys and girls. Let's get at it. Thumbnail.